when the feedback loop is broken and there's things that are disrupting, it has a significant impact on how we can learn our motor learn, our motor learning, and um, just initiating, sustaining, and stopping our movements. So we don't have control over our body movements, and that volitional control is is stopped. We're, we're not able to continue with that. So here are some of the effects of what happens with that broken feedback loop. So I said you know, before the inefficient movement patterns really hard to initiate. Um, a lot of my clients struggle with that initiation. And so they do need those prompts to get going. They need practice with initiation, which is something that I work on a lot with uh, my clients. And then certainly um, at our school, initiation is a big, big deal. And we don't realize how much we prompt. Um, and so they're able to kind of get through life. But when it's something that now we're not, or they need to initiate, even something simple. They're sitting on the, the sofa watching TV and they want to go and get a drink of water. They cannot get up and go get a drink of water. We don't know that. And so it's important to work on building the pathways to initiate. Social and communication challenges, perceptual challenges, those disruptions and misfirings that, that um, it is, happen in that feedback loop. It impedes motor control learning and motor memory. No volitional control. And one thing that I put here um, as well, neurological, but not, it's not cognitive. So talking about all of this information is at the neurological level. We're not talking about anything related to the cognitive aspect of learning. Um, anxiety is in red because that's what ends up happening when the feedback loop is disrupted. And just to kind of give that example here with a visual with um, some of the motor neuron neurons where they have very smooth, quick, long neuronal pathways, which is the purposeful movement, short um, disrupted neuronal pathways are what ends up with the impulsive, quick, fast movements, the disconnect happens there. So we really want to focus a lot on building those long neuronal pathways. Ways. And we do that through coaching the body, working through purposeful movement. And we, I'm going to talk about that in a few seconds. Some, a quote that I found, um, it was interesting. I was doing a little bit of research a while back and came up upon this term autistic inertia. Sometimes an autistic person ends up doing something they don't want to be doing or not doing something they want to, sorry, or not doing something they want to be doing. This does not mean that they're lazy, they don't want to do something or procrastinating, although it can be observed to be these things. They are often seen as doing this on purpose. And this is from an autistic individual themselves. So something just to think about. 